Chinese government used a term outsider could not uh, easily to understand. What's the comprehensive? What's the four comprehensive five ideas, something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Even us don't understand the thoroughly. So, but uh, through this uh, forum meeting and uh, through the help made by scholar, my international organization, and the uh, uh, foreign business uh, community, and the other foreigner, try to understand and uh, communicate. Communication is very important. Mm, China development is good, not only for China, but for the world, especially for those uh, companies who engage in China. So I think they can understand. Mm. During the conference, I noticed your working style. You talk to everyone. Everyone can find you and you listen to all their concerns. Many would say, this is an exhausting job if someone do their job like this. The problem, I think, for Chinese uh, government uh, still facing is communication. Mm -hmm. We need to learn how to communicate with outsiders to understand uh, what their concern. It's so simple to say, we are still a developing country. But you're number two. Economy you're huge, world. with the 1.3 billion for people, and uh, the people feel some kind of the threatening, especially in the neighbor. Uh, we can understand that, and also we can understand the environment in the world is not uh, so friendly to China. China is different. We say we are different, but they see us also a different. But China Development Forum try to show people the face is same, is human. We are same. We share the same problems. We share the prosperity uh, want to with the worldwide, and uh, we are in the same boat. How much of your early experience really taught you about the necessity of things that you are doing right now? We are a generation to uh, pass, to experience the many difficult times in China. Your parents were returnees. Yeah, also for my parents during the Cultural Revolution, they have to move to Jiangxi to work in the farm. You were sent as a young man to the northeastern part of China, Manchuria, the part of China that was still suffering from poverty, extreme poverty, and severe weather conditions. And you survived. Uh, we, we witnessed uh, to those uh, hard times, uh, to those farmers. So, but it's uh, very good lessons uh, for us to try to understand their concern. The real China. Yeah. You were a teacher. I was a teacher. The one student is really, how do I say, uh, the, uh, very active in the class. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty, maybe that's a better word. <laughs> and uh, so his mother yeah, invited me to home and uh, have a dinner with Mushroom with the chicken, I still remember. <laughs> still remember. <laughs> because, you know, at the time, everybody was so poor. Yeah. A meat dish, probably, it's only an annual delicacy. <laughs> so they want to invite you to the family yeah. and share with them, because they really want to express their appreciation. Yeah. Suffering and challenging life for you, but at the same time, it seemed that you enjoyed yourself by helping others at the time, those students. But of course, we should forward a little bit. You went to university in big cities in China. You even go abroad, studying in Harvard and many other places. So how do you see the contrast, the different sides of China? Try to understand what happened in the society. Try to understand the different level of government and the difficulties to implement 
any policy and uh, do some uh, adjustment with the local initiative. Interaction um, between the central and the local government, between the central government with different ministries, but most important is the central government with the bottom, with the society. So that's the process of decision making. Uh, that's the unique character of China uh, decision making. For some time, Mr. Lu, there has been debates about how willing China is now anymore about opening up and how much guts does China have in pushing forward still with its reform agenda? China need to change and then reform ourselves. Opening up is the one way to help our reform. And uh, this is uh, credibility, legitimacy, and uh, the promise, the social contract, whatever the, the words you want to use. But if China want to achieve the goal by 2050, that's a 200 year after the war. Right, so, the Opium War. Opium War. So uh, China still have that goal and uh, still have a long way to go. If we think we can stop here, we can try to protect ourselves by closed door. That's, I don't think anybody has that stupid mind. Development in China is not just about reform and opening up. It is also very much about how China, the biggest developing country, deals with poverty, particularly in its rural inland areas. China State Council issued a National Child Development Plan for poverty-stricken areas. This program emphasizes the importance of education from early childhood to teenage years. Lu Mai, together with his colleagues at China Development Research Foundation, have devoted enormous amount of energy to building projects for it, from village kindergartens to free lunch programs at primary schools to vocational training for teenagers. During our interview, he could not help but brief us on all these exciting developments. So these are the, where the schools are? Yeah, very easy to identify. There are 40 provinces. 100 counties, wow. 9,000 schools. We just uh, put, for example, Guizhou. So how many schools are there? It comes out. Yeah, Guizhou. 2,516 schools in Guizhou that are benefiting from this project. Uh, yeah. These are specific names of those little counties. Yeah, Zhijin, and uh, we can find a school. Oh, so, wow, uh, it's if amazing. We, if we look at uh, any of those, yeah. This is where the school uh, is, in Bijie. Chadian uh. Township and the Haima School. How many students? Uh, they said uh, 365. And this is the meal they have. The kind of meal they have. Yeah. Look at this, is the backward, analyze the, the data, analyze the situation. Uh -huh. Those are nutrition situation. Uh, so if we look at the uh, energy, yeah. How many calories they're taking for the lunch? Yes. Mm. So from this room, we know the China, the world, especially in those uh, mountain area, it's difficult to monitor, to get the first hand information. But uh, with this uh, technology, we can do that. You can do that. We monitoring uh, three billion RMBs the government spent in those areas. Three billion, that Three is billion. the amount the government put into this uh, free meal project now. Only in this uh, 100 county. If we expand it to total 680 counties, we can monitor all of those, but uh, it costs some money. Right, we have no are you money. happy about this? I mean, to see your mini little project at the very beginning, yeah. now sprouting around China. Uh -huh. the, the children are very happy. Uh, we will analyze the, their face, their smile, mm. because we have so many pictures. So from those pictures, we can analyze. 
<laughs> you can Would also you really have you or not? <laughs> yeah. Look at this side, local uh, school teacher sent to us. Look at the boat. It's so big, <laughs> uh, just uh, like a face, yeah. But they eat them up oh. every day. Because they are very young, they need to grow, huh? Yeah. I'm very happy to see <laughs> this one. <laughs> I cannot eat so much. <laughs> <laughs> and look at that, because they don't have a, even a table, huh? It's a poor uh -huh. area. Yeah. So they just put the bowl on the floor. We need to improve their life step by step. First, I have a food. Second, I have a qualified quality, the, the food. And the third, maybe environment issues should be concerned. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. But Rome was not built in one day. Lumai understands that sustainability and results are the key for all projects. Yeah, it's already 10 years. We see the progress like a school meal. Now, uh, our project started uh, 2,000 students uh, have a lunch. Mm -hmm. Now it's uh, 32 million of students. It has become see. national policy. Yeah. The village kindergarten, uh, we built a 100 uh, 1100. Now, uh, local government uh, try to use this model to build um, another uh, 10,000 uh, in the three provinces. So we made a progress, but still, those are far away. Those kids cannot speak by themselves. Those family has no influence on the media. Uh, we need to bring people to look at that. You advocate about a combination, both education and nutrition. That has been a rare thought, shall I say, among many of the philanthropic works here in China. When you try to push forward this project, do people ask you questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we try to convince all of them why the money should put in these uh, two issues, mm. education and the nutrition. Uh, this is uh, based on the very solid uh, the, 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 the evidence. In 1990s, uh, after that, uh, the people figured out about the brain, how the children learn. And uh, with those uh, knowledge, we know the most important things is the intervention of the nutrition, intervention for the parenting and the education. Think about that. Someone born in Beijing, for example, my granddaughter, mm -hmm. uh -huh. he, she has uh, everything, uh, she, parents and, uh, and uh, also books and uh, everything. But same time, some boys, some girls are born in the poverty area. At the beginning, they are same, till 18 months. After that, the difference show a big gap. The knowledge, the language, the especially social skill. Why? This is unfair. Mm -hmm. The only reason is you're born in, in some different family. We need to help those uh, bottom 20, help those family, the children. Their grandpa take care of them, but do not know how to talk with the baby. Their parents uh, work outside of the village. Uh, who can do something to help them? I hope government can do something. Government um, has uh, financial resources. It needs a uh, good uh, organization mm -hmm. and uh, put all those resources together. So we try. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lu, you just came back from one of those trips in which you try to investigate what are the latest the situation. I just wondered how things have changed as you see it. Oh, this uh, change happened in the children. Mm. This time I went to uh, Hubei, uh, Hu, Hunan Guzhang County and uh, there is a little girl uh, when she was four years old uh, she, is, uh, she was uh, left behind of children 
And uh, her so parents, her parents are all migrant workers. Yeah, and uh, her grandpa is uh, was uh, very nice uh, to her, but uh, cannot teach her. So you you can see that short video. And uh, after this class, uh, we didn't solve everything, every problem because uh, the parents still outside of the village. But the children, that that Peng Ya learn from teacher and uh, can talk with the stranger. Or st when we visit there, we see the changes. Yeah. Earlier days is important to her. Uh, she learned some social skill. She know how to communicate uh, with outside. Did you try to talk to her? Yeah, yeah. What did you guys talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Not too much about the school, about uh -huh. the, what uh, she learning. And uh, in Bijie, we see another uh, family. And this family, the Mr. Huang, uh, graduated from uh, primary school, but the only four years that she, he learned a few words. and. Uh, uh, his wife so, could not uh, read. So the government helped him to build a new house. Mm -hmm. But uh, his uh, daughter, now in four years in the primary school, it, the ground is uh, just a 20 score in the 100. Wow. So, so she has difficulties, certainly. Yeah. And, uh, she, the two young uh, kids, one is uh, two years, one is uh, four years, they are afraid of the people. They cannot uh, face to me, uh, face to outsider, afraid. Lack of social people. skills. Yeah. yeah. They have no hope for this family. Yeah. Even you build a new house, you give them some tool, but uh, without the uh, invest, in the human capital, mm -hmm. without the invest in the early years, is no hope for the family.